last year would not have been the same without my first guest. Give it up for Roseanne Barr. <laughs> your question i was rubbing you up yeah in the room and uh -huh. and, some and you of your... never had nothing like it did you oh it was good <laughs> it was it was <laughs> special special <laughs> uh somebody had warned me and told me not to rub your foot area because you oh hit... i can't stand my big toes touch it really grosses me out i can't stand it i can't stand that or having my wrist touch really no i have all these phobias you know L let's talk about it's just the toe, the, just the big toe? And my wrist, yeah. Wait, so, so like a guy could massage the other four toes, but just don't touch that big one? Right. Especially the toenail is the, the really bad one. Yeah, the toenails, but I can't take that. And, and what's up with the wrist? What, hey, oh. I, keep, <laughs> I just keep thinking about uh, the veins that are in the wrist, you know, and I mean, there's some arteries in there, and it's really gross. And, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty, you know... I have a lot of weird things. That's, that's very strange. The wrist <laughs> and the big toe. I'll remember yeah. that after you and Tom get to divorce and, uh, you know, <laughs> we're spending the infinite money. <laughs> I that's also have joke. this thing for five, you know. Everything has to turn out to five, or I just get really neurotic about it. Like, I have to do everything five times. Like, if I turn off a light in a room, you know, I have to go do it five times, not just one time. And, uh, you know, I have, like, some weird stuff like that. That is weird. I know. And tough on a husband. Five times? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, not that. So oh. Much. Uh, uh, just all the neurotic things, like washing my hands, I have to do it five times. And, you know, that kind of kind of neurotic stuff. I have a lot of that. Fives, and I have sevens, too. So do some things I got to do seven times. I don't know. <laughs> what a pain in the ass you must be. I mean... <laughs> It's like, I'll be right in, honey. I got four more times to wash my hands. <laughs> um, you once said that being a star was cool. Yeah. What about it is cool? When did I say that? I don't know. I, I had all this stuff, this big folder this morning. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, that's I, I think it's cool because of the people you get to meet that are, fa you know, the famous people that you get to meet. I mean, that's really cool. Like, who have you met that well, really you Well, know, I met you Prince. Out? That that was real. That really flipped me out because, you know. Yeah. Those are the people who have also met Prince. <laughs> and he's, he was just so awesome, you know. Yeah. And it was really thrilling to meet him. And then, you were you a know, fan of his music? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a, yeah, I think he's the greatest. Is yeah. that why you wanted to move back to the Midwest? Well, no. <laughs> so you could be closer to Prince's studio? No. no you, you, why do you want to move back there, by the way? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I like it there, and I miss snow, and, you know, there's too much traffic here. and I just want to have a quiet life. I know it doesn't sound like it, but... That and I don't know who cares. But uh, <laughs> okay, who then I met Gregory met? Peck one time at the 7-Eleven. Do you believe that? Gregory Peck. Uh huh. Gregory Peck. And uh, and I met uh, you know Wayne Newton, which was really cool. Yeah. And I met um, let's see. That's so funny. Wayne Newton is great. Wayne Newton is great. And uh, I met Georgia. And I met uh, Whitney Houston before, and I met Barbara Streisand, you know, Ooh, and yeah. I met, like, that's the cool thing, is that you could go, and Frank Zappa, and really people that are my idols, you know, I get to meet them. That's the cool part of it. Now, Barbara, um, when I came to see you at the amphitheater, yeah. you did a lot of Barbara-esque type stuff in your act. You're singing yeah. more now. Yeah. Well, you know, when you've got it, you've got to flaunt it, our singing. <laughs> and uh, as, you, as you know... <laughs> As you know, I am the world's greatest singer. You know that. Oh, well, I must be the world's greatest singer, you know, because my voice could stop a f nation. Oh! take a commercial and come back and expound on that comment and and what the singing did to this nation oh, okay okay we'll be right back with Rosie <laughs> When 
when you sang the national anthem, uh, it really stirred this country up. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. A lot of people thought it was funny, though. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got over 50,000 letters, and, uh, you know, they say that that's only like, you know, a, like a, you have to get, like, real upset to write a letter, and it represents mm -hmm. something like 5 million people or something like that. I don't know how right. they do all that. Right. But a real positive, uh, thousands and thousands of letters of people thought it was funny and got it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, then a lot of other people didn't like it. But. Well, you know, the irony of the whole thing is that the people who blasted you are now using it to boost their television broadcast and their year-end articles. Well, I just have to let go of it and go, you know, it's gonna be for the rest of my life, probably, that they'll show it. Every time they have anything about me or my work, you know, they'll show it. But, uh, you know, I thought it, of course, I went to do it to be funny, and, uh, you know, I think it's funny. And, um, you know, I think it maybe in 10 years, people will see that it's funny. But, you know, it was just the wrong place at the wrong time, and plus it was for free. And any time you do anything for free, you know, you're just begging to get killed, so. That, that's true. <laughs> I want to talk about, because, you know, Whitney, I have to tell the story. Okay, you know, you know how in my show, like, I sing and everything? Okay, because yeah. I ripped off a lot of women singers, because, like, I want to be a woman singer, act, act, you know what I mean? Obviously, everybody knows that. Okay. <laughs> I, so I ripped off a lot of Barbara Streisand stuff, you know, because, like, when I come out, you know, and I do this act, because my show's on tomorrow night, HBO. And, uh... What, you dog me? I dog and, you, but and, you and, deserved it. Oh, no. you... Oh. But he knows he deserved it. <laughs> Don't you know you did? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a wimp. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I do this whole thing that, see, because I saw Barbara Streisand invite these people over to her backyard and charge them $5,000 oh, yeah. to watch her sing, man. Yeah. So I stole her whole rap from that because it was so awesome of show business that somebody could actually do something like that. You know what? I, I thought it was the greatest show business thing ever. So I wanted to do a tribute to famous women singers, and I did, stole a little bit from her, and I stole a lot from Bette Midler, and then I stole a lot so from you and Bette hang out Elizabeth a lot. You, Taylor. You are real tight, right? No, I think she's a bit. Oh, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> Not Bette. Well, have you ever her. met her? Yeah, I met her. I says to her one time, I says to her, hello, I'm such a fan. She goes like this, oh, hello. So, you know. Well, wait, wait a minute. Wait. It's strange she call you a slut. That's a strange word to use I for know, you because you're married. I didn't hang out in no bathhouses. <laughs> <laughs> we better talk about but singing. I want to talk yeah, about singing, how, what I singing. stole from Whitney because I'm so excited. Okay, okay. I opened for Whitney Houston the first time she ever did any concert. It was in San Diego. We... It was like when she had her first hit, and it was her first uh, tour, mm -hmm. and this was about six years ago. And I stole something from her, too, that I have in my act, which is, um, if you give me just a little bit of you, I'll give you all of me. So I stole that right from her. So there's a lot of stuff that I stole from a lot of great women singers, and, and the act is kind of supposed to be a tribute to them and to show business. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was, it was a lot of Thank fun. You. and it, And plus... If people go see you, they also get to see the old Roseanne yeah. that they know. The stand-up yeah. is in there, too. Well, I figured, you know, i got to do something to show how glamorous I've become. <laughs> you know, since I left my trailer, you know, i got to show a little glamour to the American public, you know, otherwise they're not going to be, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was waiting... <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to heckle you, because I remember in the old days at the comedy yeah. store, out of all the people who were able to deal with hecklers, you were the roughest on people. Yeah. I think you make men tear up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You like hecklers, don't you? Well, it's so dangerous, you know, standing there being a stand-up comic is a really dangerous kind of like a, it's like a, I always thought of it as being like a, uh, you know, those fighters in World War II, them underground people, what do you call those? Uh, the kamikaze people? No, or, or the... the uh, the resistance uh, fighters. Yes, I always that's what I meant. Stand up was like that. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's what it is, you know. And you're up there, and you're trying to refute some kind of stereotype, you know. And people are coming at you from that stereotype in their head, so it's fun to refute that because it's something that you feel like you're doing for a good reason. So that's why I always liked it so much, because, you know, I was up there talking about uh, women and preconceived stuff about women, and you know, when they'd say stuff, you know, then I'd have to come back because that's something I do believe in, you know, as well as as other, uh, you know, freedom things, but uh, oh, yeah. in democracy of all sorts. But, you know, I mean, I like fighting. I do. I've always <laughs> liked 
I grew up in a place where all I had to do was fight. And I, yeah, who I you telling? Kind of I person. know you love to fight. I know. <laughs> oh. yeah. Well, I'm just that kind of a person, you know. I, I never was a, you know, I never was the Avon lady or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Do you go back to the comedy store now and see Mitzi and work out? And... Well, I go to the improv in Santa Monica on account that's real close to my house. And I, I don't work out too much, you know, unless I got a show coming up. But I like to go watch other comics. How do the young comics treat you? Because I know you and I had talked one time about how some of our yeah. friends uh, are, are strange to us now. But yeah. when you go in those places that you used to go in, yeah. uh, is it cool? I mean, Well, you know, some people are weird, but I think it's just how we are as comics because we're really bitter, small-minded people for the most part. Well, we're not all of you us. Are, you know we are, though, right? Because we're really big babies and we're, like, bitter small-minded folk that like if anybody gets a job you know you should have had it yeah. and that's how it is but that's probably how it is in all the show business for all performer people because I mean to take yourself out and do that to yourself and put yourself out you you got to have something you have that oh you mean of, what we do every night on stage yeah. in front of an audience you've got to have something loose I think yeah. <laughs> to do it you know you know what I mean yeah yeah I, I guess. I guess we're no, just very competitive. We're... You're not secure. No, you're just real, uh, terribly, terribly insecure, and, and you think that there's only one job and that, you know, you should have. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. you think so? Well, I don't really feel that way, but I I guess maybe a lot of people... You maybe... do so feel that way. Oh, yes, I feel it. that way. I, I do feel that way. It's for a moment I thought I didn't, but I, I do feel that way. <laughs> and I'm so bitter right now, I, I want to go to commercial because you're getting too many laughs. I, <laughs> We'll be right back with Whitney Houston. This is Roseanne. Yes, Whitney Houston. Oh, man. Um, that bumper is the new video on the new single? Yes, it is. Yeah, All the Man I Need. All the Man that I Need. I know, who's that about? I'm just asking the questions now. It's about you. Oh, you... I wish it was about me, but unfortunately, I have to live the fantasy through friends. So anyway... Uh... So on, so on. <laughs> I, I won't get into it, though. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Would you like to give her any advice? Give me some advice. Oh, well, I was going to say... One I... thing or another, you know. Yeah. You know how you're going to sing. You sang so good. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> you know, you're going to sing the Star Spangled Banner, you know. That's right. That's right. At the what? Super Bowl? The Super Bowl, that's right. So I was going to tell you, uh, don't grab your crotch right after that. <laughs> And do not spit. Oh, I was gonna, I was, gonna, I was gonna grab my crotch, but I was gonna spit though. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, tell me what nippy is all about. Oh, I see it on nippy. the album on the license plate there. Nippy, nippy, nippy. My father. I'm really hoarse. Excuse me. Yeah, you but know what? I appreciate. She's I'm hoarse. So she has something wrong with her, and she came and she sang anyway. She could have lip synced. Not on this show, but she could have lip synced. <laughs> I can't let it happen. You can't let that happen. Mm -mm -mm. No, there will be no Millie Vanilli in here, huh? Not in this building. <laughs> or, 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 she means the Millie Vanilli right? syndrome. That's, she, it's it's yes. a lot of other Millie Vanillis There's out there. There's a lot of Millie Vanillis out here. Uh -huh. um, Nippy, my daddy named me Nippy when I was born. I don't know why. He just thought that it would be really cute to name me Nippy, so it stuck with me all through my life. So, yeah. yeah. It's Nippy, you know. Is that also your production company, too? Yes, it's my production company. Now, on this album, there's another song. I guess you're going to release it later. I love it because Luther produced it. And... Who do you love? Yeah. Yeah, who yeah. do you love? You all go way back. You and Luther. Luther and I go way back. I mean, I've known Luther since I was about 13 years old. And um, my mom kind of like um, took him as her son, you know, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've been like this for a long time, long time, my baby. So you've been waiting to do this project with him, or at least... Yeah, we, we waited a long time to do this. Um, we did this song in like two days. We had just had so, it was just so easy working with Luther. You know, we just did it like that. It was yeah. that much fun, yeah. Um, can I ask you one serious question? Something that always... How serious is it? Well, 
it, it's, it's not about your personal life. It's about a little oh, professional thing that always bothers me. Oh, really? What is the deal in the past when you've had the friction at the Soul Train Awards? Where does Ooh. that come from? For those of you who don't know... They boo me at Soul Train Awards. Yeah, and, and I'm not exactly sure. You know, you can't ask the whole crowd, excuse me, was there a meeting that I missed? What was that about? Yeah. Yeah, I want to say that and some other things, but... Um, I don't really know what it's about, but I think that I've got a lot of flack, you know, uh, about I sing too white or I sing, you know, I sing white or something like that, you know. So I think that maybe that's where it comes from. I don't know. You know, I, I haven't had the time to ask why I get booed at the Soul Train Awards, but I grew up on Soul Train just like every other black kid. Wait, wait, but, but I, first of all, uh, you okay. sang the way God planned for you to sing. That's Thank number one. Number okay, that's one. number one. Thank and, you. And, and, I'm not exactly sure what singing white is, but I don't think I don't know, maybe, there is more soul maybe. to be offered than oh, what well, you did. I don't know if he really loved me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, is that what it is? I don't get it. I don't either. I don't either, but I do sing the way God intended for me to sing, and I'm using what he gave me, and I'm using it to the best of my ability. We'll be right back with Whitney and Rosie. All right. But it's, it's funny. No, it's you got funny. your paper? <laughs> I got it. Oh! You lied to me, Arsenio. Hi, Brooke Shields, man. Hi. Um, I lied about... Well, you look nice. You look very... No, nice. don't try me with the compliment. I lied we about We had what? a deal, Arsenio. I'd be your first, and you would be my first. Wait a minute. I, I don't know what you're talking about. What am I talking about? I'm talking about... This, Mr. Haircut. You told me that I was the first guest on your show, on your first show. Now I find out that your first show was when I was nine years old. What do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Interview him and leave him? You know, it, it was the 70s. I, I was young. I didn't dress well. You know, uh -huh. I'm sorry. I, how much money you want not to show the tape? Give me the... <laughs> Too bad Sandy already gave me a hundred dollars. <laughs> Sandy, if you show that tape, if Sandy, if you show that tape, you're gone. You're I'm Arsenio Fadim Hall. And let's hear it for the total heaviosity of Maunu 2 plus 2. How about it? Yes. <laughs> Give him a few of these if you don't mind. So John B. Bro is looking good, my brother. <laughs> what you using it, man? <laughs> it's fluffier than mine. Oh, it's after a shame, man. Ah. Yeah. You know, I read an article in Ebony that said Afro Sheen can make you go bald. <laughs> Just a thought, my brother. Be careful, blood clock. You uh, just returned to the country, didn't you? Yes, I did. We actually came back from the Persian Gulf. We were in Bahrain. And I still couldn't get into uh, a visa into Saudi Arabia. But what we did was we went to Bahrain, which is just a bridge across, but it's an island. And they're, they're a lot more lenient on women there. And we visited thousands and thousands of our troops. And, and the most important thing I think I came back with is that the morale over there is really, really high. It's really good. And they're wanting, yeah, really. They said the most important thing is to have that they have the people at home to support. And, and as long as they have that, they said that they're, they're really ready. Our prayers are with them. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you all being here tonight. I appreciate you tuning in. I want to thank my staff and crew. It's been a wonderful two years. My family is the best. Uh, all of you, thanks for being here. And Sinbad, yo, yo, yo.